We'll go ahead and begin our post-race uh, driver availabilities here for the Exalt uh, We Paint Winners 400. We're joined now by our fourth place finisher, driver of the number 24 Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports, Chase Elliott. Chase, you led a whole lot of laps there. A very exciting uh, restarts number of times there where you're holding off uh, some challengers. Tell us a little bit about your run today. Yeah, just uh, definitely really proud of our team and the work that everybody at Hendrick has put in. I feel like we have four really fast cars today. I hope that's a good sign for races to come. We certainly had, I feel like, one of our best days of the year, uh, personally. I thought uh, for us to be able to contend to lead laps all day and have a car that they could fight for the lead um, you know, the majority of the day, I thought was, was great. Obviously, uh, I made a big mistake there behind Dale. Uh, in the tunnel after that restart, wish I'd been a little more patient, giving ourselves a better chance, but um, live and you learn. Excellent. Questions for Chase Elliott. We'll go right here to Zach in the middle, please. Zach Sterniolo with the Pokemon record. Uh, it looked like on restarts, anytime you started out uh, on front, out front, you were able to really pull away pretty, pretty easily there. Uh, well, take me through those restarts because obviously behind you they got pretty wild. I mean, yeah, definitely the, the lead is the best place to be. If you can clear those guys before you get to turn one, you kind of have whatever lane you want, um, and you hope that the guys behind you are still too wide. And if that's the case, they just don't have the air they need to, to run a, as fast of a corner. So just a big arrow advantage to be out front, and um, we see that every week. Additional questions for Chase? Chase, congratulations on a strong run. Thank you for stopping by. Continuing our post-race media availabilities, we're joined now by the driver of the number 88 Exalta Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale, uh, an exciting finish there. Take us through those last few laps, please. Well, the 41 was up there trying to save some fuel. He couldn't make it all the way, running hard. And I didn't know if we could. Greg was saying we could, but I didn't see how we were the only ones that could. Um, but uh, we all pitted around the same time. So... Um, Really, we lost the race on the restart. The 24 and me were racing pretty hard. He was really, you know, trying to get his lead back and knew he knew if he could get the lead, he was he was going to win the race. So um, that's, he got me loose a little bit. That slowed us up some. The 41 got a good run on us, and I didn't do a good enough job holding him off. I could have been more aggressive, done some things differently. But we ended up uh, getting tight and not really having anything anyways right at the end of the race and the 41 saved enough we just sort of i just started backing my corners up trying to get through the center enough because brad was catching us and well you know it was all right we uh, certainly finished better than we should have our car wasn't quite a second place car we started off really tight and really slow probably about a 15th place car greg and the guys made a lot of changes and made the car better uh, I don't really know exactly how much better we got it compared to the competition, but we certainly made it more competitive. Uh, we just didn't get any practice. You know, we've, the driver's been asking NASCAR to take away the morning practice and add a little bit to the second one to make that Saturday practice an hour and a half. And we didn't, you know, it was just an hour. This is, takes you a minute to run around this track. You can't get 13 damn laps in practice. I don't know how we're supposed to figure out what our cars are doing. So we came into this race really just with no idea. We, we made a lot of changes last night. We basically put in an old setup that worked uh, in the past, and uh, it started off missing the mark pretty bad. But they worked on it and got it better. And uh, we'll take the points. We've had a rough month, so this is a decent finish for us. Also joined now by the driver of the number two Miller Lite Ford, our third place finisher, Brad Keselowski. Uh, Brad. Dale just talked about some of the strategy as it was playing out there uh, towards the end of the race. Can you share a little bit uh, from your perspective? Yeah, um, I thought we were, you know, okay to start the race. My teammate Joey Logano was really good. It's pretty obvious that uh, if you could get to the lead, you had such an advantage um, that uh, someone had to be three, four tenths faster than you to pass it. Uh, so I was just trying to keep the track position all day. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that with uh, the whatever penalty there. But um, – we uh, were able to drive back up there towards the end and thought we had a lot of speed. Just every car I would pass would take, you know, 10, 15 laps just being stuck in the wake. And uh, it's just, you know, part of it, I guess. So um, 
all in all, a, a pretty decent weekend for us um, with the Miller Lite Ford and, and Team Penske, and proud of that effort to uh, to run up front and have another solid weekend. We've, we've had a lot of those lately, and that doesn't go uh, unnoticed by me. I'm really proud of my team for those efforts. We just want to keep it going. I want to turn them into wins, but uh, all in all, a lot to be proud of, and uh, Keep on going. Go to Michigan next week, and hopefully we can get those two more spots. We'll now take questions for Brad and Dale. If you'll just raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. We'll start right here in the front. Uh, Matt Cattrall, Lebanon Daily News. Uh, this question's for Dale. I know you, you just said you know you weren't really uh, happy with your car th throughout the day, um, but just a second-place finish alone, do you think it's still some, uh, still a positive you, you and your team can build off of coming off the rough, the rough month and coming into a track where you're really good at? Yeah, it certainly feels better than finishing 15th. Um, you know, and the car wasn't that bad. You know, I just we just have such high standards after the last couple of years we've had. And, um, man, when you get just a little bit behind in this series, holy moly, it takes so much work to you just to just regain what you lost, not really to even have an advantage, just to get back to where you were. Um, <clears throat> a tenth out on that racetrack is in, impossible to find. So it's a uh, – it you know, it it's a good – step in the right direction i felt like we could come in here and run good and uh you know i think we learned a lot that we can we can we can understand how to get better for the next race here i'm looking forward to michigan and uh you know obviously it's going to be a different package but i think we will we'll run good on that track too and and anticipate uh anticipate having a good run in kentucky you know we've always done really well on the repaves so for whatever reason our cars hook up pretty good or i just like that as a driver i don't know We'll continue with questions. We'll go to Bob and then Zach. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN uh, for Dale. Um, Kurt was able, obviously able to save a lot of fuel uh, today, and he didn't have his crew chief. Is it any different for a driver when you don't have the, the, the normal guy you listen to to kind of know whether you really need to save fuel or not? You know, these teams are so deep, and there's so much good talent. You know, the, the crew chief's on the pit box, but he's got four or five other guys up there with him. And they're up there every week, and they understand how the races are working out. And so they they got guys within their organization that can step in in situations like that. And you'd probably be surprised at how how involved the crew chief is in the race weekend, even though he's suspended. Um, <laughs> I, you know, them guys are them guys find unique ways to be able to communicate and be involved and and be on top of everything the car and the team are doing with the car even though he's not there to see it with his own eyes, you know. So it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of technologies. You know, they can sit back in the shop and have all the computers and everything and see everything happening on the fly. So, you know, it's, it, you definitely don't want it. Uh, you know, six weeks would, would be a little worrisome, but one race is not a big deal. We'll go to Zach in the middle and up front here to Lee. Zach Atanzo, any fun touches for both you guys? Um, can you explain the, the importance of having a good spotter, especially during you know big restarts like we saw today, five and six wide? How, how important is a good spotter here? Does that mean you? Both of them. <laughs> well, I think we both got you know probably two of the best spotters in the garage. And, um, you know, seems like every race here you get four or five wide down the front stretch. And, you're lucky to see one or two of them uh, with the way the head surrounds are in the car and the, the way the mirrors are done. So that's uh, sometimes frustrating. You're glad to have them. You'd rather do it all yourself, but uh, you just can't. So uh, they're, they're such a big help, and uh, I'm really glad to have one of the best. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're Both our spotters are really good, really good guys, are really talented and understand exactly what the driver's looking for you get to working with the same guy for a long time and you sort of skip to where you speak the same language and he, he knows what you want and don't want so to have that uh and it, you get it as a driver it just gives you confidence having somebody that you trust and believe in and, and knows is going to give you good information you drive the car with more confidence you know you got confidence to do things out there we'll go up front to lee Lee Spencer, motorsport.com. Junior, you had a battle with the Chase Elliott. Chase led the most laps today. Can you just talk about how he's matured in this first year? I mean, did you ever expect him out of the box? I mean, I know he's with a great team, but the, the maturation he showed is pretty incredible. Well, you know, I don't think you get hired by a team like that unless you're good. I, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't expect him to struggle. I thought that um, he's got a lot of laps under his belt, a lot of high, he's been in a lot of high pressure situations whether it's running his late model somewhere. I mean, the competition 
it was tough in the late mile series on on those small tracks and in the Xfinity series, the truck series. I mean, he's been in so many scenarios. If you look at his career over the last four or five years, he's been through it all. Certainly learned a ton. He's got a real good attitude. He's very calm. Doesn't get excited about much. And uh, he's got a really, really good crew chief. Um, a guy that I think really is wrapping his ar- you know, arms around the idea, working with Chase and grooming Chase. So they're doing, they're, you know, the team's doing an amazing job. They were always fast. Uh, with Jeff, and I think the transition couldn't have been better. Jeff really set that team up for the transition, and and uh, all that went so smooth. So just a great, just perfect storm situation for for Chase, and he's doing a great job. You know, he's great. He's become a great teammate. We're gonna finish up right here in the middle with Zach. Zach Sterniola for the Pokemon Record for you, Dale. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Toyota's domination over the last really season now. Uh, and you come out today and 300 cars uh, beat all the Gibbs cars. Uh, it looked like the Chevys had a lot of speed today and had some good fuel mileage there at the end. Do you think that today was an outlier, or do you think that this is a sign of good things to come going forward? At the start of the race, the Toyotas were up there running good. I saw the 11 struggling a little bit, but I didn't think that would last all day. Uh, the 19 was pretty quick. The 18, 20 was good. You know, it's just track position late in the race. So we got – we lined up in some – some good lines and um, did the right things instead of the wrong things down in turn one and, and didn't lose any positions, maybe gained a position or two here and there. It's just so tough on them restarts to, to take advantage of what's going on around you, even if your car's great. You just got to have everything work out for you. But I don't think that uh, the Toyotas have lost anything. We certainly are getting a little bit better, and we're working hard. I know the whole, whole series is working hard to catch the Gibbs stuff. Gentlemen, congratulations on strong run. Thank you. Thank you. We now welcome our race winning driver and crew chief, driver of the number 41 Monster Energy Haas Automation Chevrolet, Kurt Bush. Also joined by his crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer. Gentlemen, congratulations on a, a great win today. Uh, Kurt, take us through those final few laps. Well, thank you. Um, it's, um, it's an amazing feeling when you get to drive into Victory Lane and, and you, any track, any weekend, at any time. And it's very special because it makes you think of all the hard work that everybody at uh, Stewart Haas Racing put into this car. And to be in position, you know, that's what it's all about. And Johnny Klausmeyer called a perfect race to, you know, gamble on the fuel a little bit. But he also, um, you know, gave me the ball. He's like, hey, we're two laps shy. Um, go get it for us. And so as a driver, you know, we were restarting, I think, 10th at that point. Uh, we had to work through some of the, the guys that stayed out, which you knew uh, or I knew we, we could get those guys because, you know, they were really gambling on fuel. Uh, but just overall, um, you know, a great team effort. It's, uh, it's a lot of work at the shop, but each week we've been in position this year so far, um, and we haven't quite sealed the deal, and so today we did, and we're going to enjoy this win. Johnny, I believe this is your second uh, stint atop the pit box there, uh, so you're batting 500 there. Uh, tell us a little bit about when you're making that call, kind of what's going through your mind as you're developing that strategy. Yeah, I mean, it was... It was nerve-wracking, but uh, you know, it and all ended up working out really good. Um, we just we knew that we were racing guys on fuel that had the same engine horsepower, Hendrick power than us, so we knew that we should be in the same uh, sequence as them. Um, Kurt did a great job of saving it. We just kind of kept him informed on everything that was going on, and he took it and ran with it, and it was great. Kurt, before we go to questions, I just want to let you know this uh, win does move you into a tie for 25th on the all-time series wins list uh, with NASCAR Hall of Famer Rex White. So pretty cool thing there. And we'll open it up to questions now for our race winning uh, driver and crew chief. You'll raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start back there in the back and work our way forward. Joseph Walken, FrontChurch.com. As he said, it ties you for Rex White. What do you think this does for your legacy? Uh, it's, it's something that you don't think about. Um, but it's nice to to have the acknowledgement to be in a, an elite group, but it takes an elite team and, and, and an effort that um, that you have to have as a driver in this day and age to be in position to win. And so far this year on the Haas Automation Monster Energy Chevy team, 
we've been on one side of the yellow or one side of the restart at the end of a bunch of races. And, you know, it, it's, it sits there and it wears on you a little bit, but then you got to focus, 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 and allow the races to unfold. The more often that uh, you're in position to win, the more chances at winning you're going to have. And throughout my career, I've always enjoyed racing here at Pocono. It's a fun racetrack. It's a different racetrack. It, uh, it has road course rhythm. It has oval characteristics. But then it challenges engine builds. It challenges new setups because we race here, you know, in June, and then we come back here quickly at the end of July. And then uh, we don't come back again for another 10 months. And technology changes so quickly. So Pocono is always a fun place to go to to challenge uh, the team and to find that right strategy to win. And it's, uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. I'm going to enjoy it, this one just like I've enjoyed the other 27. We're going to go to Bob, then Joe. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Is it any different having Johnny in your ear telling you to save fuel versus Tony? Just because you would worked with Tony for so long, you might know kind of what, what he means when he tells you, you know, you have to save so much. I don't know what it was. His voice was way more calming than Gibson. Uh, <laughs> when you have an engineer calculating your fuel, I mean, I mean, it's a calculator. I know Gibson can do it just the same. But it, when you have a new guy uh, or somebody different and you're not at your full strength, there's something that happens to everybody on the team. Everybody pulls harder. Everybody digs in a little bit deeper. And not having Tony Gibson here today, I know everybody gave that much more. And this is a win for Gibson. He's assembled this group of guys. And Klaus Meyer took over, and it was a perfect um, called race. Um, we had a great setup to maintain speed. And when he says you're two laps shy, I'm like, um, great. All right, well, let's see what we can get. And I knew he was going to gamble. I knew I needed to do my best to um, preserve the fuel and to deliver the win. We'll go to Joe and then Jeff. Joe Person with the Charlotte Observer for either or both of you on that fuel preservation. Jeff Gordon in the booth said he thought, based on what he was hearing, that you guys actually were idling down or shutting off the engines at the end of the race in one and three. Is that accurate, or did you do them in, in all three turns? And uh, did you shit? <laughs> we don't think give him all our secrets. Yeah, no, we can't give him our secrets. No, <laughs> Jeff Gordon's pretty smart. He he he's a champion driver. He knows how to save fuel. Uh, for us, we did what we needed to do. Uh, they'll pull up the data to see the things that um, that I did, and we're going to learn from this too on which sequence is better to save fuel. There's about three different uh, like game plans when it comes to saving fuel. And I thought, though, two laps at a Pocono track, that's seven miles. Seven miles is, is pretty far. <laughs> and so you got to do what you can to save fuel. But Hendrick Engines put us in this position. We have a great engine tuner uh, that, that is always looking at certain things on certain weekends. And Pocono, you always know that fuel could come into play just like it will next week at Michigan. We'll go to Jeff and Dominic. Jeff Gluck from USA Today for Johnny. Uh, Kurt said your voice was pretty calm. Were you that calm inside? Did you have nerves of steel up there? What were you feeling during those last final laps? Yeah, I was definitely nervous. I mean, you know how the deal goes. It, you can be hero or zero really quick. Uh, I knew once we took the white flag, we would be in good shape. And uh, once we got to that milestone, I felt pretty confident in it. We're going to go over here to your left, to Dominic, then to Zach, then we'll come up front to Scott and Chris. <laughs> Dominic, how to go on the racingexperts.com. Question for both of you guys. For Kurt. Of your 28 career wins, is it possible to say where this one ranks on the totem pole? And for Johnny, if the win hasn't sunk in yet, uh, when do you think it will sink in for you? I mean, it's, it's a win, and it's special. And any time you get a chance to enjoy a win at the Sprint Cup level, it's hard to rank them against other ones. Um, but there's you know, certain tracks I've done well at in my career, and Bristol's one of them. And uh, New Hampshire, I have three wins. Atlanta, I have three wins. And now at Pocono, I have three wins. And so it's nice to have the confidence when you come to a track and then you have a great team that's pulling together, you know, to, um, to work, pick up the workload of Tony Gibson missing. So this one, it makes it more special because we're missing our crew chief and we got a first timer that got a win today. We'll go right here in the middle to uh, Zach. Yeah. Um, I mean, it hasn't really sank in yet, but, you know, 
I'm sure tonight it will be. Like I said, the biggest thing for me is just the the relief of being into the chase, you know, with one win. I think that that's huge. Like I said, we've been so close. It's just a matter of getting that off our shoulders, and now we can just build our notebook for the chase. It'll sink in when they roast him at the shop on tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go right here in the middle to Zach, then we'll come up from to Scott. Zach Sterniola with the Pocono record. Uh, for you, Kurt, when you're in the car, obviously I know uh, you had faith in Johnny's call there, but how stressful, if at all, was it during that last run, uh, knowing that you were short, and uh, was there ever a doubt in your mind that you would get there to the finish? There, there really wasn't a doubt. I can honestly say that Klossmeyer gave me the confidence. He kept giving me numbers. I kept finding ways to think that I was saving fuel. Um, I kept checking the mirror, kept checking my lap time on the dash. Uh, I felt like a cook in a kitchen trying to beat the buzzer and not get chopped at the end of the show with as many things as I felt like I was managing, but the spotter helped, Klossmeyer helped, um, my past experience on saving fuel helped, and it all turned into a win here at Pocono. It feels great. We'll go up front to Scott and then Chris. Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times Tribune. For Kurt, uh, could you just kind of describe – uh, the, the, what turned out to be the pass for the lead, um, I think it was, uh, or, or, or on, the re on the restart, there was, got together a little bit with, uh, with Chase and Dale uh, in turn two, and then you wind up passing, I think, Dale in turn one. Can you just kind of describe that little sequence there that got you the lead? It, um, it, it was definitely an exciting restart. Um, those Hendrick guys, they came with a different second gear ratio that um, I know all about now, but I didn't have it <laughs> today. And what it did is it allowed them to jump ahead. And then by the time we got into turn one, I could choose easily left lane or, or right lane. And Chase Elliott wanted to block me coming off of turn one. And I said, okay, kid, here we go. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to block, you're going to get a pretty good head of steam here down the back straightaway. And then you're going to have to decide what you want to do with it. And I expected to get to his outside and it didn't turn out. And then he made a mistake, washed up, uh, the 88 checked up, and I was able to get them both. And so, again, that gets back to what I answered about earlier. We've been on one side of the restart or the other um, at a bunch of races at, at, towards the end here. And I'm just glad that the restart panned out perfectly for us. But Chase Elliott did a, f a phenomenal job. He's a smart kid. Uh, Dale Jr. swept both these races last year. I knew we were in good company up front, and we just needed a little bit of luck on our side, and we found it. We'll go to Chris Knight. Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Kurt, with the victory today, you guys head to Michigan International Speedway next weekend where not only you're the defending champion, but you're taking the momentum with a new package. Uh, how do you feel about going to Michigan next weekend? Yeah, we definitely need to stay focused. Um, with this package next week, it, it could be the future of our sport. And you always want to start off on a good foot when you have less downforce with the, the splitter change and the rear spoiler change. But I got one of the best in the business with, with Klossmeyer, uh, the read that we have from one another. And I think we took a great step moving forward this weekend on understanding each other, understanding the cars, the setups, the tires. And it was fun to, um, to work with him today and calling the race. And so we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, it, last year's win with the new aero package this year doesn't mean much. We've got to go there with an open mind next week and a, an attack for the future. We've got one more over here from Jeff. I might have totally missed this, and you guys may have already said this. Did, did anybody talk to Gibson yet? Did you guys text him or call him in victory lane or anything like that? I was trying to get him on the phone um, before we walked in, so he's going to be the next phone call. But I talked to Gene Haas in victory lane. And Johnny and I posed for a picture uh, when we had the sprint hats on with like a, a we're going to super man. yeah we're going to superimpose Gibson in between both of us. Gentlemen, congratulations on a great win! Thank you. Thank you.